Thank you for standing by. This is the conference operator. Welcome to the Eldorado Gold second quarter 2024 results conference call. As a reminder, all participants are in listen-only mode and the conference is being recorded. After the presentation, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. To join the question queue, you may press star, then one on your telephone keypad. Should you need assistance during the conference call, you may signal an operator by pressing star, then zero. I would now like to turn the conference over to Lynette Gould, Vice President, Investor Relations, Communications, and External Affairs. Please go ahead, Ms. Gould. Thank you, operator, and good morning, everyone. I'm excited to welcome you to our second quarter 2024 results conference call. Before we begin, I would like to remind you that we will be making forward-looking statements and referring to non-IFRS measures during the call. Please refer to the cautionary statements included in the presentation and the disclosure on non-IFRS measures and risk factors in our management's discussion and analysis. Joining me on the call today, we have George Burns, President and Chief Executive Officer, Paul Fernihau, Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer, Lo Smith, Executive Vice President, Development, Greece, and Simon Hilly, Executive Vice President, Operations and Technical Services. Our news release yesterday details our second quarter 2024 financial and operating results. This should be read in conjunction with our second quarter 2024 financial statements and management discussion and analysis, both of which are available on our website. They have both, also both been filed on Cedar Plus and Edgar. All dollar figures discussed today are U.S. dollars unless otherwise stated. We will be speaking to the slides that accompany this webcast, and you can download a copy of those slides from our website. After the prepared remarks, we will open the call for Q&A. At this time, we will invite analysts to queue for questions. I will now turn the call over to George. Thanks, Linda, and good morning, everyone. Here is the outline for today's call. I'll provide a brief overview of Q2 results and highlights. I will then pass the call over to Paul to go through our financial results, and then to Lowe and Simon to review our operational performance. We will then open the call to questions from our analyst. Turning to slide four, the second quarter delivered safe gold production of 122,319 ounces in line with our progress towards full production guidance. Production was in line with expectations as grades increased at Lamarck, FM2 Cruz, and Kisada. During the quarter, we did have a small impact to production as a result of a labor-initiated work stoppages at Olympias, totaling 17 days in the quarter during negotiations on a new collective bargaining agreement. Currently, we're in the final stages of negotiating a mutually acceptable CBA with our unions. Looking ahead, we continue to expect increased production in the second half of the year, remaining on track with our guidance to produce between 505 and 555,000 ounces of gold in 2024. Total cash costs and all in sustaining costs were in line with our expectations at $940 per ounce sold and $1,331 per ounce sold respectively. Cost increased primarily as a result of higher royalties driven by higher gold prices, in addition to higher labor and contractor costs and higher fuel prices during the quarter. As noted in Q1 and subsequently in the second quarter, continued higher gold prices during the quarter have led to increased royalty expenses in Greece and Turkey as the royalty structures are calculated on a sliding scale linked to the gold price. While we did see higher costs this quarter, they are in line with our 2024 guidance ranges. Paul will touch on our costs in more detail later in the call. Turning to slide five in the second quarter, our lost time frequency rate decreased to 0 0.40 recorded incidents per million person hours work compared to 1.32 in Q2 2023. Our commitment to create and maintain a safe and healthy workplace is unchanged and we recognize this as a continuous journey of improvement. Our health and safety focus in 2024 is based on preventing high potential incidents and further empowering our employees to promote a positive health and safety culture. In sustainability, 
I'd like to start by congratulating our teams in Turkey A on the outstanding scores they received following their external verification against the Mining Association of Canada's Towards Sustainable Mining Protocols. TSM scoring is arranged from C through AAA, with A indicating good practice and AAA indicating excellence and leadership. At FM Shukru, the site received AAA scores in tailings, health and safety, biodiversity, and indigenous and community relations. The site received A, AA, and AAA scores across all other indicators. At Kisadag, the site received AAA scores in all safety and health protocol indicators, and A, AA, and AAA scores across all other indicators. Notably, with the completion of the first round of TSM verifications, we now have triple A score tailings facilities across all of our operations. I would also like to extend my congratulations to a number of our global teams that received awards during the quarter, including a silver award from the Hellenic Institute for Occupational Health and Safety, the Best Natural Resources deal at the 2023 EMEA Project Finance Awards. This was in recognition of our Scurry's Project Financing Facility. And a bronze award in the Gender and Inclusion category at the 2024 EBRD Sustainability Awards. These awards recognize the outstanding achievements of EBRD's clients in promoting green economies and better environmental and social performance. We take great pride in our team's commendable success, and this is reflected in the awards received across health and safety, sustainability, and finance. I'll stop there and turn the call over to Paul for a review of our financial results. Thank you, George. Slide six provides a summary of our second quarter results. Our operations delivered a steady second quarter in line with expectations and guidance, and with continued high gold prices driving overall financial results. Looking to the full year, our annual guidance <coughs> remains unchanged across all operational and financial metrics, with some upside possible in cash flow generation if gold prices remain at their current levels. El Dorado reported net earnings attributable to shareholders from continuing operations of approximately $56 million or 28 cents per share in the second quarter, positively impacted by higher revenue due to higher volumes sold and higher prices realized when compared to the second quarter in 2023. After adjusting for one-time non-recurring items, adjusted net earnings were $66.6 million or 33 cents per share for the quarter. Adjusted net earnings in Q2 2024 accounted for the reversal of two principal items. Firstly, a $1.9 million gain on foreign exchange due to the translation of Turkish deferred tax balances, net of inflation accounting impacts, and secondly, a $12 million unrealized loss on derivative instruments, including our gold zero cost collars. Our free cash flow in the quarter was negative $32 million, and positive $33.9 million, excluding the capital investment in the Scurious project. Cash flow generated by operating activities before changes in working capital in the quarter was around $132 million, compared to $82 million in the same quarter last year. As previously noted, the increase is principally related to higher sales volumes and realized gold prices. Second quarter total cash costs were $940 per ounce sold, and all-in sustaining costs were $1,331 per ounce sold. Our costs increased compared to Q2 2023 as a result of higher labor costs and consumables such as fuel, driven by production volumes, as well as higher royalty expenses, primarily due to higher realized gold prices. The higher royalty expense in Q2 impacted ASIC by approximately $40 per ounce. In addition, increased sustaining capital investment contributed to higher ASIC for the quarter compared to the same period in the prior year. Capital expenditures on a cash basis were $133 million in the second quarter, including investment in growth projects at Kisladag 
where we focused on planned waste stripping, the North Heat leach pad and related infrastructure. At Scuries, we continue to advance major earthworks and infrastructure construction for the project and, as expected, invested approximately $92 million in the period. We anticipate that we will restart investing our own equity in the project as early as the fourth quarter this year. Current tax expense of just over $20 million for the second quarter decreased from approximately $22 million compared to the same period in 2023, primarily due to reduced Turkish taxes after accounting for increased investment tax credits and inflation accounting adjustments. Deferred tax, sorry, deferred income tax decreased to a $1 million expense in Q2 2024 from an expense of $17 million in the comparable quarter in the prior year. In Q2 2024, deferred tax included a $4.4 million expense for use of tax attributes in Canada, $5.8 million expense related to the weakening of the Turkish lira and the euro against the US dollar, partially offset by a $7.6 million recovery from the application of Turkish inflation accounting. Turning to slide seven, stability and status quo are the key themes. Our balance sheet continues to be well-funded and able to support our growth strategy. We ended the quarter with total liquidity of $810 million, including $595 million of cash and cash equivalents and $215 million of available credit capacity. During the quarter, we extended and increased our senior secured credit facility by $100 million. This was done proactively, taking advantage of favorable market conditions and allowing us to update and renew our previous facility that was due to expire in 2025. Cash increased over the quarter as a result of positive cash flow from our mining operations, combined with drawdowns of the project finance facility for the Scurious development. We expect to build cash during the remainder of 2024 from cash flow at our operations as we benefit from strong gold prices. Additionally, we continue to focus on maintaining a solid financial position that provides flexibility to respond to opportunities and fund our growth strategy to unlock value across our global business. With that, I'll now turn the call over to Lowe to go through the Greek asset highlights. Thanks, Paul, and good morning. Starting on slide eight at our Scurious Copper Gold project, while Q1 was primarily focused on earthworks, Q2 saw construction work commence in multiple areas. Going forward in Q3 and Q4, underground mining, mechanical piping, and instrumentation in the main plant will continue to ramp up, in addition to the construction of the filter plant building. Overall progress is 76% when including the first phase of the construction and we remain on track for first production in Q3 2025, with commercial production expected at the end of 2025. Detailed engineering has advanced and is now at 72% complete, and procurement is substantially completed. Work rigorously continues to ramp up on construction of major earthwork structures, including the whole roads, water management ponds, low-grade stockpile, primary crusher, process facilities, filter plant facility, and the integrated extractive waste management facility, the IEWMF. Productivity improvement initiatives by the Earthworks contractor, including adding a partial second shift, has yielded significant improvements, including optimizing cycle times for the fleet as well as improved sequencing of material placement, and quality control activities. On the critical path is the filter plant facility, which continues to advance. We expect to award the filter plant construction contract in the next few weeks. The filter press plates continue to be pre-assembled with 225 now completed out of a total of 588, and during Q2, the fabricated frames for those plates arrived on site. Work in the mill flotation building is progressing well. Commissioning of all overhead cranes were completed during the second quarter. Construction, lighting, scaffolding, steel, and concrete work are all on track. 
in addition, off-site pipe spooling fabrication and contractor mobilization continues on plan. Work is also progressing on the underground development to support test stop mining in 2025. We awarded the second contract in Q2, which includes the test stop work as well as additional development and services work to support the development of the underground mine. The contractor mobilized to site and the first blast occurred on June 17th. We have also completed the earthworks to allow access to the cofferdam site during the second quarter and construction has now commenced. In addition, the low-grade ore stockpile fill placement has also started. Moving on to slide nine. During the second quarter, the capital investment at Scurious was $92 million, almost double the first quarter spent. This brings our year-to-date spent at Scurious to $144 million, which is in line with our expectations as the spend is expected to ramp up significantly as mobilization and the site labor increases over the second half of the year. We remain on track to meet our guidance for investment in Scurious in 2024 of between $375 and $425 million. At the end of Q2 2024, we had 841 personnel on site and are still on track to ramp up to 1,300 by the end of the year. The next few slides will slow the advancement of the work underway. Turning to slide 10, on the left-hand side is the primary crusher. As planned, the upper retaining walls are now completed and it is expected that the first pour for the concrete slab for the base of the crusher building will be poured in August. On the right hand side is the filter plant area where you can see two drills are actively working with a third one having recently arrived in July. The contractor's productivity has increased significantly and 270 piles are now completed, effectively finishing the piles required for the filter plant building. There are a total of 871 piles with the remainder to be completed for the ancillary buildings. In July 2024, preparation work for the concrete foundations on the filter plant have commenced with assembly of the building structure to commence in Q3 2024 following the award of the filter plant construction contract. The inset photo shows a closer up view of what will become the floor of the filter plant building once the concrete slab is poured. On the next two slides, you will see workers commenced on support infrastructure, including the process control room building, process plant substation, water pump station, lime plant, air blowers building, and flotation reagents plant areas. On slide 11, these pictures are all on the west side of the main process plant building. On the left-hand side, you can see the secondary substation. On the picture on the right-hand side, at the top, is the pump house and the bottom is the process plant control room, which when completed will be four levels high. On slide 12, the photos show the east side of the main process plant building. You can see where the reagents, mixing building, compressors, air blowers, and lime building will be. We will continue to provide progress updates as we advance towards the first production in the third quarter of 2025. Moving to Olympias on slide 13, second quarter gold production was 13,541 ounces and total cash costs were $1,231 per ounce sold. Production was impacted by 17 days of labor initiated work stoppages, primarily in June as we negotiated the new CBA agreement. Total cash costs were positively impacted by the productivity as deficiencies from the region transformation initiatives, as well as slightly lower unit costs of certain consumables, including electricity. We also benefited from lower transport costs as a result of improved shipment logistics. For 2024, production guidance at Olympias is between 75,000 to 85,000 ounces of gold. Production in the second half of the year is expected to increase over the first half of the year as a result of 
expected increase in ore mined and process. As George mentioned at the beginning of the call, we are in the final stages of the CBA negotiations. I'll stop there and hand over to Simon to discuss the Turkey and Canadian operations. Thanks, Flo. Starting in Turkey, I am slide 14. At Kishidar, second quarter production was 38,990 ounces, with total cash costs of $941 per ounce sold. Production was in line with our expectations as grades increased during the quarter as we saw higher tons placed on the pad. Total cash costs were impacted by increased royalties. To further advance our understanding and unlock opportunities within our world body, we currently have a geometallurgical test work program underway. This program is evaluating the effects of ore type variability on the life of mine resource in order to refine the crushing agglomeration and heat bleach circuits with an expectation of completing a study in 2025. The study will focus on optimal moisture, reagent addition, particle size, and implementation impl incremental debottlenecking of crushing plant to maximize value of Kishida. Optimization of drum and belt agglomeration continues within the circuit to ensure product consistency and operability. For 2024, production guidance at Kishida is between 180,000 and 195,000 ounces of gold. Production is expected to increase in the second half as compared to the first half of the year as we expect to achieve higher stacking rates. At FM2 Crew on slide 15, second quarter gold production was 22,397 ounces at a total cash cost of $1,087 per ounce sold. Gold production throughput and average gold grade at FM2 Crew were in line with the plan for the quarter. For 2024, production guidance at FN2 Crew is between 75,000 and 85,000 ounces of gold. Production in the second half of the year is expected to be relatively consistent with the first half of the year. And now moving to the LAMAC complex on slide 16. LAMAC delivered a strong second quarter of 47,000. 391 ounces at total cash costs of $759 per ounce sold. Production was positively impacted by higher grades during the quarter, which were in line with expectations. The total cash cost increases were affected by higher sales volumes, and the remaining increases were due to additional costs incurred in labour, contractors, and equipment rentals. The team is focused on increasing productivity with an aim on with an aim on ramping up development and mucking rates in the triangle and all MAC uh, deposits during the second half of the year. The all MAC deposit remains on track to take a bulk sample, complete a pre feasibility study, and announce the inaugural reserves by the end of twenty twenty four. We have advanced development to 190 metres at the end of June and plan monthly advance rate ramping to 120 metres moving forward. For 2024, production guidance at Lamac is between 175,000 and 190,000 ounces of gold. Production in the remainder of the year is expected to be stronger than the first half of the year as grades are expected to increase. I'll stop there and hand back to George for his closing remarks. <coughs> Thanks, team. It's an exciting time at El Dorado. We are now just over a year away from bringing Scurries, <clears throat> our transformational copper gold project, online, and it is rewarding to see the continued progress as we advance towards first gold. We expect Scurries to be a powerful catalyst to drive shareholder returns as we continue to deliver construction progress over the next year and production in Q3 2025. In addition, across our global operations, our teams continue to focus on continuous improvement projects with the objective to deliver safe, profitable ounces. I couldn't be more proud of this team. We also delivered another consistent quarter, which positions us well to achieve our production and cost guidance for 2024. 
In addition, the record high gold prices, we've benefited significantly from margin expansion. Additionally, the jurisdictions in which we operate have also benefited with royal, higher royalties and increased tax payments as a result of the higher gold price. By maintaining a discipline focused on cost and capital allocation, coupled with higher gold prices, we continue to realize margin expansions resulting in continued growth in our free cash flow from operations. This positions us well to further build on our already strong cash balance to continue to create value for our stakeholders. Thank you for your time. I will now turn it over to the operator for questions from our analysts. Thank you. To join the question queue, you may press star, then one on your telephone keypad. You will hear a tone acknowledging your request. If you're using a speaker phone, please pick up your handset before pressing any keys. To withdraw your question, please press star, then two. The first question comes from Mike Parkin with National Bank. Please go ahead. Hi, guys. Congrats on the good quarter. Um, just starting with Kishla Dag, um, the CapEx trend that we're you know, seeing, I guess we could, it's still fair to assume that growth capital will be in and around how you're kind of trending in the last 12 months on a go forward basis, or are you still running at modestly elevated capital? Like when I look back a year or two ago, it was generally growth around 20 ish million. It's been more kind of mid to high 20s, uh, 32 in Q2. How should we think about that kind of going forward? Well, I mean, at a high level, Mike, I would say you know, we we run through most of the growth capital involved with the uh, HPGR, North Leach Pad, and agglomeration. This year, um, we're completing construction on the ADR plant. So you remember we put the absorption part of the plant in last year. That's where we pulled the solution. To, the gold out of solution on the carbon. Um, during the past year, we've been using the south leach pad to, to strip the gold off that carbon and the poor gold. So, um, anyway, we're advancing now to add the desorption and recovery plant to the north leach pad. So, it's not a lot of capital for that piece, but it's the last piece of that expansion uh, for leaching. I mean, the, the rest of our growth. Capital uh, primarily is around stripping, and that will continue for the next six years or so, at which point uh, there will be a big drop-off in, in stripping requirements for the remaining life of mine and inflection, inflection point in free cash flow. Okay. And on production, are you getting all the production from the new pad now, or is it still a blend? And if it is, you have a, like, can you give us an idea of like what percentage is coming from the new pad versus the old pad? Uh, thanks, Mike. It's Simon. Um, we, um, through the course of um, 2024 and 2025, are still utilizing both the south and the north heat bleach pad. Uh, as you know, we have a long leach cycle um, at Kishida, so we need to ensure we have sufficient um, leach space um, to allow for that leach cycle to um, run to its um, full uh, its full cycle. Um, the, the percentage um, we'd have to get back to you on the exact numbers, uh, but we would see predominant north um, heat leach pad being more dominant moving forward in 25 and beyond that. Okay. Um, obviously, it's a heat bleach, so, like, analysis of recovery rates is a little tricky, and then your long leach curve, as you pointed out, adds to that complexity. But if I look at, like, a trailing 12 months, and I look back to, like, you know, you added in the HBGRs, uh, the agglomeration tie-in about a year ago. It, you know, on the numbers you've been kind of posting, it does kind of bounce around a bit based off grade and ounces stacked and everything. 
but it did seem like you were kind of in the mid to high 50s, some quarters even 60, but now you're kind of shifting down, you know, kind of sub 50. Is that what's kind of spurring this um, review in optimization? You talked about, you know, exceeding your budget uh, on the site tour last fall and just kind of wondering, you know, what's your thoughts there? Like, I know the technical report had you at 56%. Are you still seeing that as ultimately achievable, or do you feel like there's maybe a need for additional tweaks beyond what that technical report, you know, called for? Thanks for the question, Mike. Maybe I'll frame it at a high level and Simon can add some color. So when you when you go back to the original studies, um, we had six different rock types that, that we looked at recoveries and impact of the HPGR investment and then later the agglomeration. And, and those recoveries are variable. Uh, they run from low 50s to low 60s. And so part of the, the recoveries is just a matter of which ore types are we processing. And then, and then beyond that, you know, how – how fine we crush it, how well we agglomerate it, also has implications on on recovery um, for every one of those rock types. So it's a pretty complex geometallurgical situation. We've got quite a bit of data now since we started up the circuit, and so we're just leveraging off that information to say, all right, what can we do to further improve the circuit? So, you know, we'll be looking at debottlenecking the plant, We'll be looking at uh, additional agglomeration impacts on recovery um, and, and maybe even debottlenecking the entire plant. So we're taking, now that the circuit's up and running, we've got lots of data. We're going to take a wholesome, full look at how the, how the circuit's performing and what the opportunities are to make further improvement to, to NAV for, for Kisada. So, I mean, high level. We're comfortable with that 56%, but we're going to do study work, and we're going to look to see where we have opportunities to improve. Okay, thanks. And then switching over to Olympias, one last question. You know, you kind of started off the call there that the labor agreement's still work in progress. Have you had any uh, operational disruptions in July, or do is there any indications that you might still see some uh daily kind of disruptions while you finalize that? And do you have a sense of potential? I know it's kind of a, a tough question to ask you, but do you have a sense of like maybe when you'll be able to have like a signed agreement with them? And is that a three-year contract, two-year contract, five-year contract? What's the term on it? Yeah, Mike, it's uh, uh Thank you for the question. Um, no further um, interruptions in the month of July. Um, in terms of concluding um, the uh, discussions, um, we're looking at uh, doing that over the next uh, two weeks. And, um, um, yeah, uh, so we, we're approaching the end of, um, very much approaching the end of these, uh, these discussions. Okay. And just the, the term of the contract? Uh, it will be um, a three-year uh, contract. Right. Thanks. That's it for me, guys. Mike, Mike just before you go, um, those uh, percentages stacked or planned for 2024, roughly around 66% on the South East Bleach Pad for this year, and obviously 33 for the uh, for the North East Bleach Pad. That will probably migrate to. Um, higher numbers on the north in 2025. The next question comes from Tanya de Connect with Scotiabank. Please go ahead. Um, great. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for taking uh, my question. Um, maybe just to follow up, just on the Olympias uh, contract, um, just for ourselves without getting into the nit nitty-gritty, but can we just assume, um, you know, in terms of, you know, wage increases to be in line with what um, has been, you know, sort of the inflation rate in, in, in the um, global mining sector, about 5% for labor. 
And we're just trying to benchmark ourselves here. Yeah, Tanya, I don't want to get into the specifics, but I tell you there'll be no surprises are expected on the cost side. And it's, you know, we negotiate a contract that's a win-win for the workforce and the company. So there's, you know, there's productivity initiatives that we're focused on. Um, and obviously the union's looking to, to have wage increases. So um, no surprises expected. It, 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 we're expecting this to be overall good news for both parties. Okay, thank you for that, George. And then just on, on the, the scores on the contracts um, left to be awarded, it's really only the um, filter plant contract that needs to be put in place, which you said is coming in the next couple of weeks. And is that really it? We've got all the contracts we need. We've got the underground, well, hopefully this filter tailing, uh, you know, contract in place. Do we have everything we need? And then just sort of getting the – got all the, the items on site that we need, and it's just getting the, the labor aspect of getting that into place and training. Is that how I should think? I mean, it sounds very very high level. Obviously, you've got to continue building, but I'm just trying to understand from a higher level that we have the critical items. Yeah, I'd love to tell you every contract's been signed other than the filter plant, but really it's all the material contracts. There are smaller contracts for ancillary buildings and so forth, like a GNA building, a um, mine administrative building. Some of those aren't finalized, but they're not on the critical path and not going to impact production, and we're on track with those types of contracts. But in terms of the material contracts required to get us into startup in Q3, it is just this, this last filter plant facility, and as Lo said we're a couple of weeks from having that finalized, and we're not late in finalizing that contract and that we're still working on the, the piling, the concrete foundation, and at which point then we can put up the building. So on track. Okay, perfect. And then just coming back to this labor agreement, and, and George, I know when we were on site, we talked about, you know, getting the, you know, the, the mine uh, the employees or the, the labor portion uh, scores up to that fourth, well, greater than that. But anyways, getting the, the labor aspect in place. And I know we had talked about maybe potentially moving some from uh, your Olympias operation. So anything in the in this new contract that's going to, you know, preclude that from happening? Or is, is there anything that's being put in place to allow for that? Just try and understand on this labor side. Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, on the management side, we have moved some of our our leadership team from Olympias over to Scurries, um, and as a result, been able to promote and and uh, you know move people around within the Olympias workforce. In terms of mining, you know, we're in contract phase, and both Open Pit and Underground are being driven by contractors. Um, on the plant facility, um, we've got the operational leadership team in place. We're working now on the second level doing recruiting in Greece, and we're preparing the training facility, or not the facility, but the training program for the hourly workforce. So that'll ramp up in the second half of the year and accelerate in the first half of next year. So. We're on track with all of that. There's no implications coming out of the negotiations on the Scurries build, and you know, we're feeling comfortable on the labor side for operations. All right, that's good to hear. And then just my final question, and it's just more a, a modeling question, so maybe someone can help me out on here. Um, just on the depreciation, it looks like you're running well below. I annualize it. You're well below the, the guidance level you've given us, so maybe someone can just help me understand why this depreciation, i.e., not being an accountant here. But uh, should we be thinking of, uh, you know, lowering? Are you thinking of it, it coming in lower than what your guidance is, or is depreciation really going to ramp up in the second half of the year? Thank you, it's Paul. Um, I think there's three things that you just need to bear in mind. Um, the first one is uh, back at Q1, we had that small one-off adjustment that brought down the uh, basically the first half uh, depreciation. 
Um, the second piece that I would say is uh, we did have some additional reserves that we uh, booked at the beginning of the year, which weren't built into uh, the rates that we use for our guidance. So that moved down the unit rates a little bit. And then the final thing I'd say is, look, just remember, we're back half weighted, 45%, 55% on production. And so we will see depreciation tick up uh, approximately 20% higher just because of the production in the second half um, combined with the unit rates. Um, and so, yes, we're lower, um, but I would guide you towards the low end of the guidance uh, at this point. Okay. Just wanted just to check because it was quite low. Um, and, and, and then just on, on that 45.55, and I, you know, I hate, you know, but, you know, as we have to sit here forecasting quarterly, um, you know, I, I'm just trying to understand whether we should be thinking a quarter on quarter improvement, or should we be thinking that Q3 is going to be the same as Q4? Be part of it is grade related, part of it is Kisla DAG on the leach time. So I'm just trying to understand: should I be thinking that Kisla DAG should have a stronger Q4, and then Lamac and 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 Olympia even grades for Q3 and Q4? Just trying to understand how that 55 gets split in Q3 and Q4. Uh, I mean, just talking to consolidated guidance in a stronger second half, we expect Q3 and Q4 both to be strong. And I think my seven years at, at El Dorado, the fourth quarter has been the strongest quarter every year and, and expect that to be the case again this year. So, yeah, a ramp up quarter over quarter and, you know, 10% higher production in the second half, a bit higher in Q4. Okay. That's helpful. Thank you so much for helping me on that. Appreciate it. And, and uh, if I could get one in for Simon just at the end on that kids with that study, if, if, if I could. You know, we talked about the deep bottlenecking of, of looking at the, the mill itself, um, maybe the agglomeration, what more can be done there. Is the aim at the end of this obviously to improve the MPV, but is there just coming through it from an increase in throughput at the mill plus an increase in recovery? I'm just trying to understand what your end goal, hopefully, what, you know, you're targeting to see improvement in what area. Both to help MPV, I just didn't know if there's one focus or, or several focus. Thanks, Tanya. Um, yeah, I think you, uh, you hit on the, on the major topics there being that we're, we're evaluating, you know, as you know, we still have a long um, mine life uh, at Kishida. We are moving into phase five and phase six. Um, so we're just reassessing um, the you know the geometallurgical performance as it relates to the plant and assessing the full plant uh, capabilities to maximize capital invested so that we can set the uh, circuit up uh, for that and that's it. that's the purpose of the study so that we can evaluate those uh, those aspects that you mentioned. Okay, thank you. I'll leave it to someone else to ask questions. Thank you so much for taking my questions. Thank you, Tanya. Thanks again. If you have a question, please press star, then one. Since there are no more questions in the queue, this concludes the question and answer session and today's conference call. You may disconnect your lines. Thank you for participating and have a pleasant day.